Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we're going to look at some bar charts for energy and also some energy graphs. So here's what I'm talking about. Let's say I have a ball on a table and then it falls off the table and now it's falling, falling, falling. Eventually it's going to hit the ground, right? So if I imagine this scenario, I've got basically three points of interest here point one when it before it falls, point two when it's midway through falling, and point three when, not when it hits the ground, but just the moment before it hits the ground. In other words, it saws a velocity at point three. It's like right before it hits the ground. So first of all, I want to say that energy is conserved here. The reason for that is because there's no non-conservative forces acting on this ball. For instance, there's no friction, there's no air resistance, there's no external pushing or pulling forces. So the only forces acting on it are gravity, and that's about it. So that means energy is conserved, which means that the energy total in the system is a constant. Whatever number it is, it's constant. So here's basically what that means. Let's draw some energy diagrams. So first, at point one, before it's moving, it's obviously at its peak height. It is all potential energy due to gravity. So I'll mark that in blue. So there, at point one, it's all potential energy due to gravity. There is no other energy in the system. Then I'm actually going to skip point two, because it's the harder one, and go straight to point three. Because at point three, you no longer have a height, but you do have velocity, which means you have kinetic energy. Now, how high should that bar be? Should it be higher or lower than UG? A lot of people would say lower, shouldn't be as high as UG. That means a lot of people are wrong because it should be the exact same height. And why is that? Because I said the total energy in the system is a constant. That means it's not changing. That means it is always the same length for the total energy in the system. And since we only have kinetic energy at point three, this makes sense. Now point two is interesting because it's somewhere in the middle. In other words, you've got potential energy and kinetic energy. Now, the one thing you don't want to do is make both bars the total. Because remember that you have to add these two bars together, meaning that it's like twice as long as you want it to be, if you think that. So I'm going to erase this. So if I put it exactly in the middle, where it's exactly half gravitational energy and half kinetic energy, then both bars will be exactly half of the total height. And that's what we'll say for this one. We'll say exactly half. Now, obviously, it's not always exactly half. One could be slightly bigger than the other. Forgot to label red is kinetic, blue is potential energy due to gravity. But what I'm saying is one bar can be slightly higher than the other as long as together they add up to the total. This black dotted line here is my total energy in the system. And it always has to add up to that. So let's look at another problem like this. This time, let's say I have a mass connected to a spring system that's allowed to oscillate freely back and forth between the center line, which is the dotted line here. So this time I'm going to look at these three positions, when it's all the way on the left, two when it's in the middle, and three when it's all the way on the right. Let's see what the energy diagrams will look like for this. So first at point one, what kind of energy do I have? Well, this is when it's fully compressed on the left side. And one thing you should know, if I ever have fully compressed, what that basically means to you is that the velocity is zero. And so what that means at point one, it's all potential energy due to the spring, which I'll mark in green. And I'll call that U sub S for spring. Okay, then point two. Point two is exactly in the middle. In other words, you have no energy due to spring because you're exactly in the middle. Which means what kind of energy do we have? Well, it's not gravitational potential energy because there's no height at all. So it must be kinetic energy. And once again, these heights must be exactly the same because energy is conserved. And how do I know energy is conserved? Because I didn't say anything about friction. I didn't say anything about any other non-conservative force. So we assume that energy is conserved. So that's what the bar will look like for point two. And then for point three, well, we're all the way on the right again. We're fully compressed. And that means it's, once again, all 
spring potential energy. There's no kinetic energy because we're not moving, and there never was any gravitational energy in this problem. But notice my bars must all be equal to each other, just like this. So now let me give you a challenge question. Let's put a fourth point somewhere in between points two and three, and I want the energy bar diagram for that, but I'm gonna give you a hint. I'm gonna tell you what the kinetic energy bar looks like. I'm gonna tell you kinetic energy is that big. And what I would like to know is, finish out the rest of the energy bar diagrams. Well, for point four, I know that total they have to add to the black dotted line, so there must be another energy here. And, I, and again, I know it's not gravitational energy, so it must be spring energy, and it has to be tall enough where I add it together and it equals the total. So if I draw that to the side, that's gonna be about this tall, about that tall. And there's my spring potential energy. Again, I gave us the kinetic, and that's how you find the total energy in the system and draw these energy bar diagrams. Now, just one more thing I wanna show you. Let's say you do lose energy in the system. I wanna show you what that will look like, just with a, an example real quick. So let's say point one is here, point two here. So for my first energy bar diagram, let's just say it's all kinetic. I'm not even drawing a picture, I'm just making up an example. And then let's say it gets converted to gravitational potential energy like this. Now one thing I want you to notice for this problem is that the heights are not the same this time, and I did that intentionally. This is what it will look like when we lose energy due to something like friction. Now, as you know, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can simply be transferred from one form to another. So basically, I'm gonna draw this smaller black box right here. Now, this black box is gonna be the rest of the height that I'm missing, but what is that little black box of energy? Well, that has a few different names. You can call it the work, which is what I like to call it. I've also seen it called thermal energy, or U sub TH, I often see. I've also seen it be called internal energy, U sub INT. Basically, you can call it whatever your teacher wants you to call it. I'm just used to calling it work, so I would call that work. And notice it still adds to the total, but you're just losing some energy because it's converted to something that we can't use, such as heat or sound. And now I'd like to look at one more representation for all this energy stuff. And that's if I have a diagram like this. Let's say this is a time graph and this is energy. And once again, we'll look at the first scenario where we had a ball falling off a table and it's eventually going to hit the ground. Now in this example, I start with all potential energy due to gravity. And I'll mark that in blue again. So at point zero seconds, at zero seconds, it's going to be all potential energy due to gravity. The kinetic energy is zero. Then at time whatever, I don't know what time it is exactly, but when it hits the ground, so I'll say when it hits the ground, whatever time that is, now you've got no more potential energy because you're on the ground, there's no height, and it's all kinetic energy. And once again, notice that this number here is going to be a constant. Now the question is, what's going on in the middle? Do I connect these dots like this, just a couple of straight lines? No, I will not. This is not what I do. Why not? Well, because if you think about gravity and height and velocity and things like that, you're picking up speed over time. Remember the equation for kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So the fact that your velocity squared and your velocity is increasing constantly, the kinetic energy actually kind of has this parabola shape that looks like this. And once again, since they have to add up to the total, that means the potential energy to gravity is going to look like the opposite. So in other words, at first it loses just a little bit of energy, and then at some point it quickly starts losing energy like a parabola. And you'll notice at this point right here, I don't know what time that is, but that's when the two energies are equal to each other. It doesn't have a special name, but I'm just saying that's when the energies are equal to each other. And again, it follows this parabola shape. Why? Because one half mv squared. Now, of course, potential energy due to gravity is mgh. There's no squared there, so it's less obvious. But what I would tell you is that the height is not decreasing linearly. It's decreasing like a parabola. And you know that if you've ever studied 
projectile motion. Projectile motion often looks like a parabola. That's because your height is changing like a parabola, even though it doesn't look like it in the equation or in this 2D problem where everything's flat. So let's look at one more example with this energy diagram. Again, here's time on this axis and energy on this axis. And this time I'm gonna give you the kinetic energy and I'm gonna give you something weird like this. Let's say it starts in the middle. It's going to increase at first and then eventually gonna go back down to zero. And what I'm gonna say is that the total energy in the system is this high like that. That's the total energy. And what I'd like to do now is to draw the blue. So if you want to know how to draw the blue, remember that at each point it has to add up to the total. And if you want, you can kind of just make it a mirror flip image of this one. And let me show you what I mean. So this is about, that red dot's about the halfway point. So my first gravitational energy has to be like around the halfway point so it can add up to the total, whatever that is. Now, as you notice, the red line starts going up. That means slowly the blue line will start going down. And I'm drawing a dotted line just to get an idea for myself. I'm not super confident this is right yet. But eventually it's going to be about zero because it's all kinetic energy, as you can see here. And then over time, it's, it's going up like this parabola shape. And yeah, actually, I'm, I'm pretty confident now that this is the right potential energy due to gravity. And the reason why is because at every point you add these two numbers together, you're going to equal the total. And if you don't believe me, let's just eyeball it. Let's say the total energy is 10 joules, and let's say this point right here is 5 joules. Well, each energy, kinetic and potential, is 5, so 5 plus 5 equals 10. That makes sense to me. Let's say this energy right here is 7 joules, and making up a number. That means this energy must be 3 joules, and that looks like about 3 to me, if that's 7 up here. And once again, at these points where they intersect, again, they're both going to be 5 joules, because they have to add up to the total 10. So that's basically how you do these energy diagrams and the bar charts. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care, and bye-bye.